they will choose the next leader of the Roman Catholic Church. Today, the cardinals began important pre-conclave meetings. Three of them are Canadian, but one of those three is being looked at very closely by his colleagues. Cardinal Mark Ouellette is among a small group under serious consideration to be Pope. It's an astonishing journey from his roots. Ouellette was a typical kid in La Motte, Quebec. He fished, he played hockey, but he also had a deep spirituality. He became a priest in 1968, right in the little church his father built. After stints in Colombia and Rome, he went home to Quebec, where many were moving away from the faith he held so dear. That didn't stop him. Ouellette was a strong voice against gay marriage, euthanasia, abortion, divorce. His outspokenness and devotion got him noticed. He was made a bishop in 2001, Archbishop of Quebec the year after, in 2003, a cardinal. As head of the influential and powerful congregation of bishops based at the Vatican, he's been involved in the appointments of bishops and cardinals around the world. Ouellette clearly has influence, which is why he's considered among the top contenders to succeed Benedict. We met at his private residence on the edge of St. Peter's Square. What is it that makes you somebody who is being looked at so closely now? What special quality is there about that fellow who came out of La Matte, Quebec, mm -hmm. who is now being considered to be one of the leaders, if not the leader, of one of the world's oldest religions? So, I mean, I was brought up in the 50s, so the Catholic faith uh, for me was, was part of uh, what I received, you know, during my, uh, uh, my youth, and, uh, uh, and I discovered my vocation. So uh, I went on mission. That, that was uh, really my identity, is to be missionary uh, from the beginning. Uh, because uh, Quebec at that time had great faith and also many missionaries all over the world. It was amazing. And so I was part of this uh, trend and uh, I served in, in South America. I learned very much from this contact. and. Uh, my, my faith was confirmed uh, through deep theological investigation, you know, for, for, for many years, and uh, through teaching and the exercise of uh, ministry, you know, as, as bishop. It, it does bring a, a, a sort of identity, you know, uh, link with, with the faith. Faith for, for me is defining who I am. Uh, but really. is it, is, is it I, all I, faith? Is it all religion? Is it all God? Or is there something else about Cardinal Ouellet that makes him special? Because obviously you're special. Or you wouldn't be on that list. Whoever's making the lists up. Yes. There's something special there. Yeah. So, uh, the, so the rest of the special is in others' hands, I would say. Uh, that's, you know, I am not a good judge in my own case. Uh, and uh, uh, I am just trying to live, you know, day after day uh, in, in obedience to God and His Word and to fulfill my duty every day and, and, and leave the next day to Him. Uh, so that's my attitude for, for, for uh, many, many years. And uh, I think uh, whatever lies ahead, uh, I will maintain uh, this attitude, which is faith, you know, faith in God who is uh, uh, enveloping in a way our, our own being and leading us where He wants. Most of us who would see our names included in a list like that would obviously think about it, about that possibility. And quite likely, most of us would probably say, I want that. I, I would like that to happen. Mm -hmm. Would you like that to happen? So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have to be ready, uh, even if uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, probably others could do it better. Uh, 
uh, and but uh, we enter there and since you know uh, everything that is going on we, we have to be to some extent prepared and uh, and then but uh, I don't uh, I will uh, cross the the river when I get to the bridge and we are not there <laughs> <laughs> well you know your old hockey team the Habs yes they're in first place <laughs> to the surprise of many good and it would be a surprise to the world yes. if a Canadian was Pope. Are there special qualities that a Canadian could bring to leading this church? Um. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't like it when I go there, do you? <laughs> so, I mean, it, it would be a great novelty, obviously, you know. Um, so it is for me difficult. Uh, I think the many others in in other parts of the world are uh, good, well prepared. Also, uh, there is. A I feeling, expect the decision. You know, there is a feeling that it, it's time for someone from outside of Central Europe, whether it be Africa, South America, North America. Should geography be important in in this decision? Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, so there, there was a focus on Europe, obviously, for for centuries and centuries, and that someday, uh, I think, someday it is uh, to be uh, expected that uh, a pope would come from Asia, would come from Africa, would come from America. It wouldn't be a surprise. Nowadays, it wouldn't be a surprise, and obviously, it could bring uh, some uh, new accent. So. I mean, this discernment will be uh, will be quite. Um, I mean, uh, unexpected. Uh, it, it, it has always been the, the the case in a way. We did not expect the, the election of, of John the Twenty Third, and we did not uh, expect the uh, the election of, of uh, Ratzinger. Uh, so he was not on the list. And uh, you know there is this famous say, uh, the one that gets in Pope uh, gets out Cardinal. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a very famous say here in Rome, and we know it. And uh, so that's why I think. So the, my name is circulating, but uh, I am very careful to 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 go beyond uh, this sort of media expectations. Uh, it is different. Do you do you find you know many of these cardinals? Unlike some of the cardinals who come here and they really don't know a lot of other cardinals, you know a lot of them because of the positions you've held. Yeah. Because you've been there when many of them have been appointed. Mm -hmm. Do you feel them looking at you differently? these days than they did even a couple of weeks ago because of the decision they have to make? Uh, we are all, uh, you know, expecting uh, something new uh, because uh, it is so new what we are living in these days. You know, just uh, this extraordinary decision of Pope Benedict, I mean, it opens up uh, uh, a new future, and uh, I think we will have to, to share among ourselves, cardinals, uh, the the meaning of this gesture. Do you find yourself looking at other cardinals differently than in the past as you try to assess their potential value in that role, their capabilities, their leadership qualities? C certainly, certainly. Uh, each of us uh, is called to enter the conclave and, uh, and to, to vote for the person that is uh, uh, better prepared uh, for this uh, important mission. So uh, I have to fulfill this uh, uh, duty. Uh, it is we are elected cardinal in order to be elector of the Pope. That's our main uh, task. And so and we have to do that in conscience. In a way, you don't vote against somebody. You vote for somebody that you believe the best person uh, for the role. You mentioned a few moments ago how um, this is the potential to set a new future. The issue of abuse within the church. Yeah. Uh, you have played a leading role in trying to address this issue, uh, especially in the past few years. If one is to believe the newspaper reports of the last couple of days, uh, you played a leading role in, um, in brokering an arrangement with, with one cardinal who has, has retired. You have met 
with uh, families of victims and victims. Uh, you've prayed with them. You've apologized to them. Uh, you've used the term never again, promising never again to them. Has the church done enough to ensure sure. that never again is, is possible? Mm -hmm. You know, this is a, a very painful uh, question always, and um, everything that was bad you know, is so regretful, and uh, the church has apologized uh, many times. Uh, personally, I remember... Uh, is it apologized enough? Do you think? But, uh, so I think uh, enough. Uh, who knows? Uh, uh, we start in Canada. We started in the 90s, mm -hmm. early 90s. I remember being part of the commission, you know, for, for prevention of those uh, uh, of those facts uh, when the the, the the crisis of Mount Cashel in mm -hmm. Newfoundland. And so, but uh, the the zero tolerance policy started. In, in early 90s in Canada. Canada was ahead of, of the times, and so we were not so, uh, uh, I mean, uh, hurt by the, 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 the second wave from the United States. So, but we have learned of, uh, from our mistakes, you know. So, the, for example, to listen carefully to victims uh, to, and to, to have this focus uh, first, to help victims. Uh, and uh, I've learned something more when I was in Ireland last year for the uh, International Eucharistic Congress meeting with uh, victims at Lugderg. I remember one telling me, you've not done everything. Uh, you have to do something more for us. Uh, because, you know, these facts happen in pastoral context, so uh, with Catholic people. And so we've been, we have received apologies and uh, also compensations and so therapies and so on. But we need also to be reconciled with the family in a spiritual way. And, and there we have more to do. You are, know, you, are, you, are you satisfied with the monitoring of priests, bishops, cardinals? Uh, so I, I think the uh, protocols that have been set up uh, are effective if they are followed. But in, in general, you know, uh, you, you, you may have some cases, but in general it is very much respected and uh, carefully uh, treated, uh, I would say. Uh, how damaging has this been overall? Because I think, I think it's fair to say that especially in North America, sure. if you confront the average non-Catholic sure. and ask them about Catholicism, it's one of the first issues that comes up mm -hmm. still today. Yes, because uh, more publicity uh, was done about the Catholic Church uh, on that, you know, much more publicity. But it is not uh, a Catholic problem. It is a human problem. You know, the, most of the abuse uh, occurred in families, in very general, in society. And my, my hope is what was done by the Catholic Church, which is not yet perfect, but uh, could be uh, also of example uh, for, for others, you know, in society. And I hope it will create an atmosphere uh, in the whole society for respect of the youth, for creating, you know, uh, a safe environment uh, uh, everywhere, you know, in, in sports uh, environments and, and others. And uh, so this is uh, an issue that is still, you know, on the forefront and that has to be dealt with very carefully and but I think we have learned and now we have uh, more clear standards uh, about that let me uh, be a little more personal I want to show you this um, because last week as many um, media organizations around the world um, have been doing they've been going to La Motte <laughs> and have been yes. doing profiles on where you were born and where you grew up yes Marc? Marc? Oui. Marc Ouellette grew up in the sanctuary of a large and loving family. His 91-year-old mother and most of his siblings still live in Lamotte. 
he still calls home every week. <laughs> Graziella Willette has an easy laugh that spills out with a lifetime of memories. She says her son was always a deep soul and an avid reader, but she never imagined he would want to join the church, never imagined one day he may become Pope. But she's been praying for him and with him ever since. We say the rosary three times every morning at 7 o'clock, she says. I do, and he does. He says he will always be close to me that way. His heart will be with me. I love that shot of your mother looking out the, the window. Nice. This, um, these days must be exciting for her, hard for her, everybody asking her yes. questions. Yes. What do, you, what do you tell her at a time like this, when you talk to her on the phone? I told her to say that I told you now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> not to dream about that, yet, just to expect, just to pray, continue to pray, you know, and uh, so uh, to wait for, for God's will on, on the life of the church. So that's my, uh, my act of faith in, in, in God's grace. and. Uh, and so I'm confident that uh, the Cardinals would make the right choice uh, for the future of the church. Well, tomorrow night in part two of our interview, the conversation turns to that future and the possibility of a change in the church's direction. Does Cardinal Wallat feel church doctrine needs to adapt to social reality?